What's up, you guys? I'm Charvis Buckholz, and this is my YouTube channel, The Teacher Talker. This is my first video, so it kind of serves as a purpose of me to introduce myself to you guys and kind of talk about what type of content that I will bring for you guys to be listening to and looking at, sharing, subscribing to, commenting on. Do that. Please do that. Make sure you please do that, please. But yeah, I'm not long-winded, so these videos are not going to be extra long because like, I just like to get to the point, have a little bit of fun, have a little bit of laughs. I talk with my hands, too, so I'm sorry about that. It's that Atlanta thing, so I'm sorry. So I'll try not to do that. But hey, you get what you get, and I'm just, it's just who I am. And also, I just want to say, like, some of these videos won't be edited because, like, I'm not an edited type of person. I'm very unedited. What you get is what you get. And it's just, like, you get it and you got to move on or you just move forward in the moment because that's what teachers do. That's what educators do. Like, you, hey, back it up, move it forward, and keep on going. You don't worry about what had happened. You don't worry about trying to wipe it out. That ain't, that's not life. That's how, not how a real person maneuver through life. But, yeah, this is my channel. Thank you guys for tuning in. And what I'm going to do is like, and it's a different type of format. I just, I didn't want to do like the regular. This is a couple of minutes of me telling you about who I am and what I do, what I stand for, what this channel is for. What I kind of did, I kind of solicited some um, questions from my viewers. My view, I do have viewers. I do have people that view my channel. Yeah, millions and millions of viewers. And I have a lot of fans that sent in questions. I have a lot of tons and tons of fans. So many people, I had just to narrow it down to 21 questions. So I will be answering 21 questions for you guys to get to know who I am and what this channel will be about. And for you guys to get just to really to get to know me. If I had my um, production crew here, I, they would be crew, um, firing up um, 50 Cent 21 questions right about now. But they couldn't be here. I had to let them go because of um, COVID-19. Yeah, I had a whole production crew. <laughs> Just like, <laughs> and my viewers and fans are sitting these ends, my 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 friends and my cousins. But hey. I'm just, I'm a speaking prophecy. I'll speak it to existence. <laughs> but yeah, so to get things started, here are, I got 21 questions for you guys to get to know me. And later on, after these questions, I um kind of go more into detail. Like I said, I'm not long with it, long winded as it relates to like, you know, talking about things. So I want to answer these questions and I'm going to tell you more about what this channel is going to be about and what to expect. So make sure that you listen, subscribe, subscribe, like, share, and pass the word. Please pass the word. Pass the peace. I mean, not the peace. Pass the word. All right. So my first question is that my viewers and my fans sent in is, and these questions are randomly selected and they were randomly in order. So it, they relate to life and they relate to teaching. So it just kind of get a little bit of mo a little bit of you know different type of word for you guys to get a sense of who I really am and like things that I like and what I'm gonna be talking about. All right. So the first question is, what's your favorite food? It's not about teaching, so I don't know who sent that in. Just kidding. What's your favorite food? Um, my favorite food is French fries. I could eat French fries any day, all day, every day. You can slap me today and bring me French fries tomorrow. I love you. Don't slap me, though, because I slap back, and it's going to be a major problem. Next question. How would you confront an irate parent? I'm always with it, so you... I'm well, I'm always with it, but I know how to, you know, get an irate parent together. I know how to read it real good. But the best way to confront an irate parent is always be apolo apologetic and just always be confident and understanding as to what they're doing. And make sure that you provide a great service, but also make sure that you're not a punk and you're not letting them punk you out in that moment because they're mad. Because people get mad. I get mad. But that doesn't mean why I get, why I'm getting mad is the right, re um, right reason to be getting mad for. And I have to, you know... Calm down and listen. So make sure that you're in a um in a position to like you're able to like make you know make them calm down, and also you know make them feel like they're important and address what needs to be addressed and don't back down from. What is your favorite movie? Mm, my favorite movie is <laughs> I'm gonna be politically correct, but no, no, I'm not. I'm gonna be transparent. My favorite movie has a quote in the my favorite quote in it is. You got to use what you got to get what you want. So y'all take that and you run with it. What teacher motivated motivated you to become a teacher? 
I really have really had some really great teachers from K through twelve, and I think maybe because it's just from for me and my personality, I can't say, I can't speak for all of my peers, but I have really had some really great teachers who have really invested in, you know invested in time and energy into who I am. It kind of manifests me into who I am today. I really can't pick, but if I had to pick, I would say my. I would say Mr. Delt. He was my home um, room teacher in fourth grade, but he was also there like in eleventh grade, tenth grade. And he kind of molded me to be a teacher, and he kind of still continues to mold me to be a teacher as well. So I would say that would be the teacher that motivated me. But you all are really great if you guys are out there listening. Don't not subscribe to my channel because I didn't mention your name. But yeah, you all are really great. But I have to choose him. Do you prefer a structured classroom or more of a freelance, easygoing classroom? If anybody know me, my classroom is always making noise. People are always jumping. Kids ain't got no shoes. They sit on top of desks. Because I believe in letting kids be free, letting them be who they are, do what they need to do in order for you to reach your goal and meet the standard. So, and I'm, that's just who I am. Like, I just can't sit confined to a desk all day every day 24 you know 24 7 so my classroom is like we're dancing around we're i'm being silly they're being silly we're talking about some we know we're talking about the latest trends we're doing everything that need to be done but we just like we like to have fun my class is always kind of noisy so i always have to keep my door closed there never is a time where i can have my door open because like my class is not structured at all it's not really structured until i'm having my observation and it's just like okay y'all doing y'all best behavior but other than that hey we get to it. They like it. It works for me. Why do you think it is important for a teacher to build a healthy relationship, healthy and trusted relationship with students? Um, I feel like that's something that's really needed because if you don't have a trusty and healthy relationship with a kid, that kid is going to cause chaos throughout the whole school year. So you got to show kids that you're really invested in them. And that, you know, that shows them that they have the potential of learning. And that, you know, that their teacher likes them, that, you know, they can open up to you. And not only not in the classroom, but also outside of the classroom as well. Because our kids go do a lot of things outside of the classroom that they need people to talk to them about. So it's, it's, it's important because, hey. You need kids to meet the standards, and you need kids to behave. And if you don't get them, if you don't get a healthy and trusted relationship with them, it's going to be straight hell and chaos. Hell is not a cuss word, so I'm not cussing. That's in the Bible or the Quran, if you read the Quran or whatever you read. No shade to nobody. But yeah, build a healthy relationship. It, 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 it lasts a long time. What profession would you be in if you were not in education? I don't know. I always thought I was going to, I always knew I was going to be a teacher. I always knew. But if I had to choose, like, I like to argue and, um, I don't like to argue, but I like to prove people wrong because I'm like, I always come with the facts, the factuals. Do I need to bring the receipts? I bring the receipts. So I think I would be a lawyer. I, I would be a lawyer. Do you eat school lunch? I do eat school lunch. Sometimes I forget my lunch. Sometimes I bring a lunch, but sometimes what the kids have, it looks so good and smell good. So I do eat school lunch. So let me tell you a story. This was one time that I um I ate school lunch so much that I didn't know that I was being charged for school lunch because I just thought it was free for teachers because like, hey, we don't get paid much and hey, y'all can look out look out for me for school lunches. But like I ate school lunch like for like a month straight one time. And I didn't know that I was getting charged until like one morning I walked into the like, the main office, you know, we check out, teacher check their mailbox. And I had like a letter in there from like the cafeteria. And it was like, your balance is like 50 some dollars. I was like, what you mean my balance is 50 some dollars? But kind of find out they were charging me for school lunches. And that day forward, like I just, I still ate school lunches, but what you gotta do is you gotta become cool with the cafeteria um, staff. Either flirt, with them or compliment them all the time just have casual conversation with them and that works i was still charged sometimes but for most times i wasn't charged because i had a better relationship with them but yeah i do eat school lunches if you had the opportunity to open up your own school what would you name it and why duh <laughs> charvis buckholes academy like why would i name my school after somebody else come on now I was going to say Buckholes Academy, but you got to be careful with that because, you know, family from distance. They'd be like, yeah, I'm a part of Buckholes Academy. Yeah, I help design. No, you're Buckholes, but I don't even know you, bro. So, no, it's going to be strictly named Charvis Buckholes Academy. I'm going to have a statue, a monument, and my pictures all around the school. So, yeah, Charvis Buckholes Academy. 
if you could go back to college, would you change your major? Um, honestly, I kind of did change my major in college, but if I could go back, I wouldn't change my major. I honestly started out as a county. I always knew I wanted to be a teacher, but I kind of wanted to run away from teaching because it was always said teachers don't make enough money, and I was good with math, so I was like, okay, I'm going to accounting. I'm going to be an entertainment accountant. But and I, but I was going to teach accounting to like high school kids, and I had my own accounting business on the side to the stars, but it didn't work out. I made a D in accounting one on one, so I was like, you know what, God, let me follow my passion. Let me switch over to child development, early childhood education. So if I could go back to college, I wouldn't change my major because I it, when I changed over like to education, my world changed for the better. So no. <laughs> Which do you prefer, Brandy or Monica? Who is Brandy? Why does she even exist? The vocal notebook, as you guys say. I'm mean, the vocal Bible, as y'all call it. No, I'm Monica all day, every day. I'm from Atlanta. It's like a sin to choose Brandy over Monica and being from Atlanta. I'd be exiled. No, so Monica all day. Which do you prefer? Which do you prefer over the other? Teacher's lounge or the copy room? I hate the copy room because every school that I have been at, the copy room machine always shuts down. Or somebody is in there before me always making a million and one copies and they want to add staples and they want to add, they want to add prayers. They, it's, it's, they just want to do so much to where like, I'm just like, you know what, forget it. I, I hate the copy room. I do. Like, I'm the one, like, I I spend my own money at Kinko's or at like uh, FedEx making my own copies because I don't, I hate the copy room. The copy room, brush. I don't know what's wrong with copy machines in schools. Like, it's just like, I always prone for accidents. I always prone not work. And so I take the teacher lounge simply because, like, I like to eat and I like to gossip. I don't like to gossip. I like to hear gossip in the teacher lounge. And for me, like, I always know the latest gossip. So it's just like, I want to know. So teachers gossip in the teacher lounge as well. So at least that's my case. Maybe I'm the only one that was gossiping in the teacher lounge. And that could be what it is because I always know everybody's business. So, and people be like, well, Charvis said, Char, you know, Charvis said that. And uh, I'm like, you ain't hear that from me. No, not not me. I'm a lie. I ain't hear, you ain't hear that from me. If you could pick any superpower, what would it be and why? I would pick, I would pick flying, you know. Flights are not cheap, even though they're cheap in Corona, but like it's still a process to pay. I don't want to pay my money to fly, so I would pick flying. And... Yeah, I'll pick flying because I like traveling. And what way to go somewhere for free and I don't have to pay? I don't have to take any baggage. What do you see yourself in five years? Oh, God, you guys are getting deep. What do I see myself in five years? You guys want me to cry? I need Ayala in here to fix my life because five years, I do have a five-year plan. Mm, see myself in five years. I see myself possibly finishing up my PhD or either continuing to research with my PhD and also just like doing some type of educational consulting. And I also see myself being a children's book author. And the children's book author who dress, who addresses like real social issues as it relates to kids. And making sure that it's interactive in a way so the kids get something out of the books that I'm writing. And also, I don't see myself being a principal. I'm not going to say a principal. Because I don't want to be a principal. Principals are boring. And I'm not boring. What made you become a teacher? Um, I always, like I said earlier, I always kind of knew that I always wanted to be a teacher. I was, a, I was always a teacher when we played school growing up, and I always feel like I had enough wisdom in me to teach somebody something. So what made me become a teacher really is just like I wanted to give back to my community in a way that I feel like nobody else could really give back, and in, in a way that people really need to give back to our community, especially low-income communities, is through education. So what better way for someone in the in the um, community to give back? Then to be a teacher and educate your, you know, your students and your parents and, you know, people in the community through, you know, through being a teacher. Like, so that's why, that's really what made me become a teacher. I'm all, I always have a giving heart. So giving back through education, it really like puts a heart, you know, put a smile on my heart, put a smile on my face as well, too. What did you major in in college? Um, I majored in, uh, like I said, I started out as an accounting major, but that didn't go too well after I made that D and I don't make D's. I was an AB student, 3.0 or higher, but that D, I had to hustle to bring that up. God, I, had to, I tried to bribe the teacher, but that, 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 that didn't work. Don't, don't ever do that. But, um, I majored in um, child development in college. Wouldn't change it. I would go back and do it again. 
what did um why did you start this youtube channel like i started this youtube channel i this has been an idea for years but i just never built the courage to do so because i feel like oh, don't nobody want to hear you don't nobody want to hear about um education don't nobody want to hear about um what's going on as it relates to teaching as it relates to education don't nobody want to hear that but then i just built up you now quarantine get you thinking so doing quarantine doing this year i was just like you need to go ahead and do this. So I, you know, I started this channel because I feel like people really need to hear stuff about education and hear from a teacher stance, especially African American teacher stance, um, male teacher stance on certain certain issues as it relates to education, as, as it relates to life, as as it relates to just um, today's climate. So why not start a YouTube channel? Hell, I mean, well, hell's in the Bible. Well, so that's why I started. So why not? So that's why I started the YouTube channel. What is your educational philosophy? My educational philosophy is kind of somewhat simple. Like, I believe that all kids can learn. You just have to meet the kid. Kind of what we talked about earlier. You have to meet the kid at their need. You have to build that trusting and healthy relationship with them to get them to get to do what you need them to do. So it's just simply, it's just simply meeting the kid at their need and incorporating their wants into what is, you know, their need as it relates to the educational need. So make it fun. Make it educational but also make it related to who they are as an individual to get them to learn something. Yeah. And that works for me. Like people say it don't work. I have built tons and tons of relationship and incorporated tons and tons of things that students like into the learning, into questions, into assessments and stuff to where it really has shown a great difference. And it works for me. What's your favorite quote? As I kind of stated earlier, my favorite quote comes from a great movie, a great inspirational movie. My favorite quote is, you got to use what you got to get what you want. Meaning you have to know what's inside of you in order to know what, and you, you have to know what's inside of you in order to know, like, you know, how to, how to use what's inside of you to get what you need out of life or out of what you're trying to do. Oh, good question. As a new teacher or as a younger teacher, you may run into obstacles from seasoned teachers who may not want to implement new teaching methods. So how do you feel is the best way to address it? I'm I'm not aggressive, but I'm one of those people that is just like if I'm on to something, I'm on to something like there's no there's no way your negative energy can kind of deter me from doing what I um need to be doing. But as it relates I've been in this situation before as it relates to being a new teacher, especially a younger teacher who's like hip and who's like really had that connection with the kids and their new um the new t um teaching methods. And you run into those old season teachers. I think your best bet is to honestly approach them, not in an aggressive manner, but in an excessive manner. So don't be aggressive, be excessive. I need to write that quote down. Don't be aggressive, be excessive. Meaning that if you're gonna approach them to um kind of implement to help them implement new te um teaching methodologies or uh, methods. Make sure that you're assess assessing with your uh, videos, you're assessing with your resources to back it up, you're assessing with research to back it up as to what, how is it, how that, it, you know, it's effective. And also make sure that you're backing up with assessiveness in terms of, I'm willing to help you. So making sure that you're able, because a lot of times seasons, what, what seasoned teachers don't want to admit is that they don't know how to do new methods. But they ain't going to never <laughs> admit that, so they're just going to be combative. So you have to like meet them kind of somewhat halfway. So like I said, be excessive in terms of, you know, always doing yourself as it relates to teaching them the new method. A lot of them don't want to admit that, but they, they don't know how to do it. They don't want to know how to do it because it's, it's somewhat difficult and it's pushing them out of their comfort zone. So just, you know, be Excessive in terms of resources, in terms of support for them to understand that this method is needed. What is the one thing, last and final question, what is the one thing that you hate about teaching? I don't hate anything about teaching. Teaching is so perfect. It's just so un I said no teacher ever. But the one thing, if I had to pick something, the one thing that I hate about teaching is yeah, lesson plans to be honest and transparent. To quote Bobby Boucher Mama from the movie Waterboy, lesson plans are the devil. It's the devil. Um, but I always get my lesson plans in on time. It's like, said no teacher ever. But yeah, I would have to pick lesson plans. I'm an easy going person. I'm, I'm going to go with a flow type of person. I feel like sometimes lesson plans gets in the way of my creativity and my innovativeness. So we're like, I, can, I know how to address the I know how to make an objective. I know how to, you know, get this target. But I think lesson plan is just like, yeah. 
strain and gotta turn these in every week at the same time and it's just like yeah some of the kids didn't meet the lessons from last week so it's like i want to go back over those lessons but no you want these new lesson plans and it just takes too much time and it's draining i know you guys can use the recycle lesson plans but recycle lesson plans just not don't pull forth the effort in terms of like meeting the new goals so it's just like yeah i'd rather not really do lesson plans i'd rather like just go with it and just make my lesson plans according day by day but people don't get it but as a teacher i get it so yeah, those are the 21 questions. If my production crew was here, they'll um, fire up 21 questions by 50 cent to close it out. But they had to go home due to Corona. I'm lying again, they didn't have, I don't have a production crew. And we, they, we would not fire up 21 questions by 50 cent because 50 cent is just kind of wet these days. But yeah, those are the questions kind of, hopefully it gave you a chance for you, guys, for you guys to get to know who I am and what I'm going to bring. As I said, this, this um, this channel is going to be content about education, about life, and just about any questions that you guys have for me. You guys can send them to the teacher's hockey. I'm going to put it maybe right here, maybe up here, maybe something. I, I'll figure it out with these hands. I'm going to put it, but it's going to be somewhere right here for you guys to email me questions, stories, or scenarios, or any type of help that you need. If you're a parent, if you're a teacher, if you just in general just want to talk about life, I could be a life coach to you as well. I can go, I can go down to the um, internet and get my life coach license just to help you guys out. A lot of people doing it these days. Anyway, I can take like a 24-hour life coach class. You guys help you guys out with life um, questions. But yeah, that basically serves the purpose for this video. I hope you guys got a chance to get a little bit of who I am. And I 